Hey guys, quick little video for you here, just as a, a tip pointer for if you're doing astrophotography, because right now we're in the middle of a meteor shower here in the UK that's running for like 10 days. So I've had the camera out here now for about the past hour. Um, I've not been here, just, just the camera with the shutter release cable. So the camera just continuously fires on and on and on. Best settings if you do want to try and capture meteors, by the way, really wide lens, as wide as you can go so you can cover it because you've no idea where they're coming from and you can't react to them. Get your aperture nice and wide open to let in as much light as possible. Have your shutter to about at least a second or two, maybe slightly longer than that, um, just to give enough time for the meteors to kind of streak across the frame. I've been at around four seconds. Make sure your camera's not in single shot, it's in continuous drive mode. And then with the shutter release cable, you can just get it start firing and then leave it for as long as you want to. I think I've took like, I don't know, a couple of hundred photos now. Um, but what I just wanted to quickly highlight, if you're looking through your pictures, is distinguishing between what is actually a shooting star versus what is most likely a satellite or a plane or a piece of crap floating around in space. Because I have actually seen quite a lot of people on social media, for example, these last couple of nights saying that they've seen these shooting stars moving quite slowly across the sky and the shooting stars literally whiz across the sky, hence why they're called shooting stars. They're, they're just pieces of rock floating around in space and the earth f crashes into them at like whatever, 19,000 mile an hour or something like that. What you more often see when you look up at the sky is those single dots just moving very, very slowly. And that's actually a satellite that's, you know, in orbit, but they don't move for particularly fast relative to the Earth. And the reason you see them is that they're reflecting the light from the sun, like on the other side of the planet. Shooting stars, you see them because the light that they generate is then burning up really quickly. So of the couple of hundred photos that I've took, I've just had a quick look through now. But as I'm scrolling through these images, bearing in mind this is eight seconds for each photo. So they're in eight second blocks. A meteor, a shooting star, will only appear on one frame because they're moving that fast. If you're on a couple, you're on a second or two, it will only be on that one shot. If it's a satellite you've caught, you will catch it on multiple frames. Like it, it will appear as a consistent line even thickness all the way across and it will be on like maybe three or four frames because it just takes that long to travel across the sky. If it's a plane, you'll generally have like a solid line which is the, the main lights on the plane and then you'll have occasional dots of the wingtip lights as they flash that will run alongside it. The shooting stars or the meteorites that you're really looking for, they will appear on one frame because they're going so quick and they will also appear more like an elongated raindrop. You'll, so you'll have a very kind of bright solid front end where the meteor itself is and then you'll have the trail of it kind of tailing off so it'll look more like a kind of t a stretched teardrop. And like I said, of the 378 photos that I've took in the space of the last kind of hour or so, I think I've only actually picked up one, maybe two meteorites at a quick glance. By comparison, I think I've picked up about a dozen or so satellites because there's just so much crap flying around up there. So just a kind of heads up to you that if, you, if you're going outside looking or trying to photograph meteorites, more often than what you're actually seeing isn't the meteors themselves, it's space debris or satellites. That's not to say you can't see them, but they do happen very, very quickly. So really the best thing to do is find whatever direction they're stemming from. So in the case of this Lyrid shower that's going on at the moment, they're stemming from the north, which is in that general direction. And like I said, don't try and sit there with the camera and hit the button reacting to it because it's like trying to photograph lightning. You've, you've no idea when it's going to happen. By the time you see it happening you've, and hit the shutter button, the thing's already gone. So the best thing to do is invest in a cheap little shutter release cable, use a tripod if you've got one or wedge the camera up pointing in whatever direction you want, set a couple of seconds shutter speed and just leave it on a continuous loop. And while that's doing that, you can go inside and have a nice cup of tea and get warm while you're at it, which I think is what I'm going to do now. But that's it for this video, guys. It's just a quick one just to try and clear up that misconception in case you were thinking that you've captured all these thousands of shooting stars. Sorry to burst your bubble, but they're more than likely satellites. But as always, guys, if you have any questions or queries, comment boxes down below while you're down there. If you haven't already, make sure you've hit that like and subscribe button. Thank you so much for stopping by, and hopefully I will see you in the next video.